impact on the environment is old news. Doing something about it and doing it in style is something Mike Tremere is up to. Building designer houses like this one with little more than bags of sand. There's many other ways that people build, like cob buildings and straw bale buildings, but they all have their drawbacks in terms of time. So the sandbag system seems to have hit the spot as regards adding mass to a building. And this is one of the uh, phenomena lightweight steel construction and various other types of prefabricated buildings don't offer. And also because you don't need very skilled labor. So it gives an opportunity to employ people that would be otherwise unemployed. Reducing costs by up to 50%, his method is learned in just a few days. These bags can be filled on or near site, meaning you can build where there's no road access. The support timber is light and portable. This method of building probably gives you the most thermally efficient building that's available on the market at the moment without using hideous products like polystyrene and various other things. It's a better house, requires very little maintenance, probably going to last longer, it's more durable, pleasure to live in, requires very little extra heating or cooling. The main reason for building with sandbags is uh, to reduce your carbon footprint. Now, if Asterix was concerned with the sky falling on his head, he never had a garden on his roof to worry about. If you've done it as they have at the University of Johannesburg Art Gallery, a green roof is safe, enduring, beautiful and eco-friendly. I think the Vikings were the first people to build green roofs when they used to use peat sod to clad their roofs. It would have been a pitched roof and the clay or peat would have provided the waterproofing. This is a more modern interpretation. It's a concrete roof with uh, waterproofing layers on top of it and the planting on top. You can grow practically anything you like. Fruit, vegetables, even flowers. Tree roots can be tricky, but for anyone who needs to build over much of their plot and who wants a spread of turf, this is having your cake and mowing it. The green roof provides a very efficient insulation layer on your roof. It's uh, 300 millimeters of growing medium or topsoil, so you can reduce your heating and cooling costs in the building quite dramatically. Also, it reduces the speed that water runs off the roof of the building. The soil acts like a sponge, absorbs the rainwater, and gradually lets it drain away or evaporate back into the atmosphere, rather than it all just running off into the stormwater system in one go. Downstream in Nurtuk, we wondered, was this a pond? Was it a swimming pool, a set of rapids perhaps, or a waterfall? It is in fact an ingenious and highly attractive wetland pool built by Anthony Philbrick. Instead of fighting against nature with a chemical pool, you're going with nature. Nature is helping you to clean your pool. Your pool is being stripped of nutrients through natural processes. And you end up with water, with clean, pure water, which is, which is good enough to drink. Which I drink all the time in preference to anything else. There's a gravel bed, and underneath the gravel bed is an agricultural drain, and in the gravel bed all the bacteria, and they do a lot of the breakdown of the nitrogen and the phosphates and the various uh, products that would come off people's bodies when they swim. And then in the gravel, plants are planted, and obviously the roots are in the gravel, so the bacteria and the plants work together to be a biological filter. And then the third process is to go through an aeration process, which is why we have a waterfall and obviously UV sunlight. Alongside water and underfloor heating from solar panels and a wood-burning stove, Carol Richmond's home feeds used domestic water via a solar-powered pump into a biogas digester, which, along with some other everyday kitchen byproducts, gives her all her cooking gas on tap. If one takes kitchen waste and you put it on a compost heap, it basically breaks down and the methane that comes off it just goes up into the atmosphere. So if we put it into an anaerobic process, which is, in other words, air is, is excluded from the process and the bacteria break down all of these scraps and the, the gas coming off that is captured and most of the gas is methane and burns and can be used for cooking, the same as liquid petroleum gas. You can also face your house north, put in a skylight, use sustainable materials and renovate instead of building from scratch. If we keep consuming at the rate that we are without putting back into the earth and into nature, we actually are going to end up in deep trouble. In fact, obviously that trouble is already here. We can see it in the climate change. We can see it in the strange weather patterns. We can see it in the pollution. And we read about it all the time. It's in the daily living details we can alter, which together change the bigger picture.